Hello friends, today let me open the ATS120 receiver. Well, so to open the ATS120 we need 1.5 millimeter hex nut and a little screwdriver. And if you have a bigger knob as I do uh, you have to remove this knob. To open this receiver we need to remove four screws on top plate of the receiver and also four screws on the bottom plate of the receiver. When we removed all the screws from the receiver, we have to put the receiver on the front side and flip the back panel to the left side. The next step will be to remove the vertical antenna. Sometimes it's getting quite easily just to unscrew the antenna but sometimes you have to unsolder the bottom part with the screw. Here we can finally see the components like screws, eight pieces. This is the back cover of the receiver with a tiny holes for the screws. By the way, these holes are very tiny and also threads on it, so be careful by screwing. And this is the vertical antenna. This telescopic whip is 82 centimeters long in its full length. On the bottom you can see a small screw which is uh, soldered and this is the base of the antenna. On the front panel we can find also the speaker which is 8 ohm and 1 watt speaker. And there are also three tiny hard buttons and a small piece of sponge on the back of them which is glued. The small speaker's membrane is made of the plastic same membrane is used in Chinese VHF UHF radios as well. There are no wires between the speaker and the main board and you can see that they're just uh, soldering pads. There are also two tiny holes on the right side and on the left side of the PCB board and these have to be unsoldered before you remove the PCB board from enclosure. It is not necessary to unsolder the speaker until you don't need to replace the speaker. Under the speaker we can also see glued tiny PCB board which is not glued together with the speaker. And here also be careful to not lose the buttons. And this is the bottom plate of the radio which is soldered and is not necessary to unsolder this plate if you wish to make some service on your receiver. And original knob I replaced immediately by this rubbery knob which is much better to use. And here you can see one of the three hard buttons with the small piece of sponge on the back side which is glued. And here you can finally see the main board of this ATS120 receiver. On the circuit board you can see also the traces for soldering the shield which is not used. And this is a tiny Bluetooth module which allows you to play the sound from this radio to your 
Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth speaker. And here on the top plate of the receiver you can also see a tiny antenna for Bluetooth. And here is the bright LED with a uh, switching transistor. Small metallic switches. And the touch display, which plastic base is glued to the PCB board. Display itself can be removed and replaced by pull out these little pads. On the back cover of the receiver is glued 1400 milliamp hour battery, which is the light pole battery, 3.7 volts. And also a small piece of the Bluetooth module isolation is on the back side of the cover. And now let me overview the components under the microscope. This is the brain of the whole receiver, which is built on the Arduino. And this is the ESP32 Room 32U, which is processor of this receiver. This is a XPT2046, which is a touchscreen controller. And this is USB to serial chip CH340C. This is 1.2 ampere fully integrated linear charger. And WL2803, which is a voltage regulator. And also a little secret, there is no name component right here. And another voltage regulator is right next to it, 2803K. And underneath is a component named 10A45, which is low noise regulator charge pump DC DC converter. And this is a headphone amplifier LM4808, which delivers 100 milliwatt power. And finally, the heart of this receiver, which is SI4732. This is an integrated receiver in one body. And another little components around the receiver. Here is the external Bluetooth module, which is connected with a tiny coaxial cable to a top plate of the receiver, where is actually an antenna. You can see also a small switch to pair, but is not needed because the switch is also on the front panel of the receiver. This module is connected to the main board using an 11 pin header. A female part is on the main board. And on the final, let me screw all the screws and complete the radio and let's hope that it will work. And all is good. Perfect. Thank you for watching and see you soon.